Well, Emmeline Pankhurst, the founder of the suffragette movement, is an historic feminist icon, but trans rights protesters disagree. This weekend, a group called themselves Manchester Trans Rise Up, just like paramilitaries, complete with balaclavas, and forcefully stopped a women's rights campaign group from holding an event next to a statue of Pankhurst. <laughs> Pretty appalling scenes. They also tied the trans rights flag around the statue's waist, like an apron. Well, J.K. Rowling shared the video of the clash on Twitter. She said, I never expected the right side of history to include so many people in masks intimidating and assaulting women. Did you? So can trans rights coexist with women's rights? It's all getting very emotive and very heated. In a moment, I'll be speaking to women's rights activist Kelly J. Keane, who was speaking on that day. But first, trans woman and activist Jane, not her real name, she's wearing a mask to protect her identity, joins me from the site of the protest. Jane, welcome. Hey, Piers. It's good to hear your voice, you know. Well, it's good to it's good, Honestly, it's good to talk to you. I want to have a proper debate with you. It's an uncensored show so you can speak your mind. Here's my question for you. You're standing at the side of where all this went down. When you see the video footage of members of your group that day, and you were there, uh, members of the group basically physically assaulting a woman who was sitting there, what do you feel? Uh, I, I feel annoyed because the footage is cut and it doesn't show them storming in, shoving people over that little bit of concrete over there, which is kind of dangerous, you know. You could hurt your head quite a lot doing that. It doesn't show them shoving, strangling and kicking people. Um, and there's also not the, you know, I, sent, I think I sent footage to the producers of the show. Uh, I, doubt, I doubt you guys will want to show it, but we've got other footage of the same turfs that came over and tried to assault us there, strangling and punching people at other protests. They like okay. to play the victim. Look, listen, um, I think, if you don't mind me but, saying, you're playing you know, slight what about -ery. So I, I only really want to know, what is your reaction to the footage we have seen, which clearly shows some of the people that you were with assaulting a woman. I mean, you can't be happy that that is the image that your group has now seen around the world as doing. I mean, I mean, first, firstly, I would say, as I, as I just said, you know, uh, the footage is cut. You can't see the start of the footage. Um, and the people dressed in black, who are our security to protect members, vulnerable members of our community, uh, they are there defending themselves because these women came in when we were already having a peaceful protest there and started attacking us. They will spin it the other way. JK will spin it the other way. They'll all spin it the other way. But that is what happened. Uh, it's just they have a lot more money and power than us, so it's easier for them to get a reach and okay, put that message but, but out. But let there. me ask you... But what I would say, you know, the way, the way, the way I really feel about that... Um, I think, it's, I think it was a good thing that we came to that. You said that it was because we didn't like Emmeline. It's not that we didn't like Emmeline. She was racist. She was also a Tory. So, you know, we probably wouldn't have got on with her. But our big issue was that we don't want these hateful, transphobic women coming in, some of whom, Kelly J. Keane, for example, is a, is a big racist, a big conspiracy theorist, an anti-vaxxer, a fascist. Uh, we don't want these people coming in and standing next to this, this icon of, of, of feminism right, but and let the me, suffragette okay, movement. Let, look, and I'm going to speak to... I'm gonna speak, okay, listen. No, Piers, listen. Piers, listen. Yeah, Stop I'm shouting over me. Um, they are appropriating the imagery of the suffragette movement, a movement for women's liberation, and, and rebranding it as this hateful movement against trans people. And we don't stand for that. And the majority of women, the majority of feminists, don't stand for it. All either. right, let, let, me, let me put my cards on the table. I've always supported trans rights to fairness and equality. And I mean that sincerely. I want everyone... Uh, bullshit, bro. Well, you can say bullshit, bro, and that's fine. You're entitled to. It's an un uncensored show, and you've just proven it. But let, but let me just say to you, I always wasn't your, have... Wasn't your profile picture? Well, wasn't your profile on, picture me, of fucking yeah, I listened you to, identifying uh, okay. as a penguin? There's no point, there's no point swearing. I apologise to our viewers for your bad language. This is a chance for you to present yourself in a way where we can have a proper debate. If you've got no interest in doing that, that's fine. But I'm just going to say to you that I've always supported trans rights to fairness and equality. My issue with the way this trans debate is going is in issues like sport, for example, where I think it's very unfair that trans women should be competing against women born to female biological bodies. I have issues about safety for women. Uh, I have issues about other areas of women's rights. Piers, do you understand? Piers, Piers, do you, well, let me finish. Up, let me ask you a question. Do you understand and appreciate? What are all these dog whistles and talking points? They're not do dog whistles and talking points. They are legitimate areas of concern. You can't just call everyone who disagrees Piers, with you transphobic. Up, please.
<laughs> if you keep swearing, yeah, I'll have to can, cut you, you off. You can go and have a look at their websites. You can have a look at their Twitters. Like, they are transphobic. It's, but I am Kelly talking J. to Keen was kicked out of women's place. I just, I just Kelly said J. to you, right, if you're going to. If you don't racist, want to have a civilized like, conversation with me. People. Okay, look, look, I'm trying to give you a chance. I've explained my position. What is your problem with my position? Uh, I don't really know. I'm going to leave the interview now. I kind of only came on, on here because I thought it would be kind of funny. Um, but I want to say you're a cunt and you're a fascist. All right. Well, I apologise again to all uh, viewers who are listening to that. Uh, unfortunately, a complete idiot, which is what we saw from the video. Uh, and we hoped we could have a reasonable conversation. But that is, unfortunately, what we saw in the video. Very unpleasant pieces of work. They think it's fine to come on a show like this, pretend to debate, and then engage in just uh, abusive language. That's fine. Let's go to Kelly uh, J. King. Kelly J. King, uh, I want to talk to you about this issue because you were on the receiving end as a group there. You were trying to uh, speak at Emmeline Panker's statue. I've just had a pretty you know, unsavoury exchange with one of those protesters who probably thinks that they've had that little moment with me and they'll get that little viral moment. I actually think it's indicative of actually how awful uh, their behaviour has been throughout this episode and the way they've dealt with it afterwards. But let me ask you, you're very strong about supporting women's rights to the point where many say that you are transphobic. Do you, are you transphobic? Well, I think in 2022, transphobic really just means I don't think women have penises. And so, yeah, I, I absolutely am. So you're, you're proud of being transphobic? Yeah, I'm proud of standing up for women's rights and, and making the word woman completely exclusive to just women uh, adult human females, 100%. Right, you see, but here's my problem with that, because uh, whilst I have a problem with the last guest who chose to be abusive and unpleasant and wasn't listening to a word I said, I've always supported trans rights to fairness and equality. I don't see a need to say I'm transphobic towards them or to alienate them in any way at all. And I have a problem when you proudly boast of being transphobic. I can see why, on the other side of this argument, that kind of rhetoric would be very unhelpful to people who are trans. Right. Well, I, I guess we have a little bit of an issue with definitions, but when it comes to words like transphobia, it's simply used to silence women, like myself, who are trying to protect women's spaces, language and rights. And so if I have to wear that label in order to speak the truth, and I'm happy to do it, I really there is nothing that, that can stop me from speaking about what harms and danger uh, there is for women uh, when we try and dilute what the word woman means and we allow that language to be used for men. Yeah, so, I, I, uh, I, listen, I agree with a lot of what you say. I've, I've talked about this a lot, and I think there are serious issues about the infringement on women's rights as people try and progress trans rights to where they want to get to, which is fairness and equality. You can't create a new unfairness, a new inequality. But I don't think it's helpful to the debate for you to say, I'm transphobic, because that means that you are, by your own admission, hateful towards the trans community. That's what it means, transphobic. Yeah, but it doesn't, though, does it? Because that uh, person just called you transphobic. Um, and I think you've said numerous times, even this evening, that you are pro-trans rights, what, whatever that means. Um, and so if you give an inch, I feel, uh, then we really do give everything up. And so I'm just, look, it's just a word. It's just transphobic. What is that? I've never assaulted anyone. I've never incited violence. I don't even know what transphobia means besides uh, refusal to uh, submit to this ideology. And I just, I just won't. I think there needs to be a better consensus between the two warring factions on this, because I have a lot of sympathy for all of what you say. I also have sympathy with the trans community who do feel that increasingly a lot of the rhetoric about them is transphobic. I don't think it really helps to debate if you say I'm transphobic, because you know that will uh, cause a lot of anger towards them. And why play that game if you feel that they are playing a game with you? Why not be the bigger person in the debate and say, all right, how do we get to a place of genuine fairness and equality for all? Well, look, we could have gone into the conversation where you say you're transphobic and I'm like, no, I'm not transphobic. And then 
uh, we continue from there and we might have a debate about what transphobia means. I'm just happy just to put that out the way, just to talk about women's rights. Uh, when we talk about trans rights in 2022, we're predominantly saying allowing access to women's spaces for men who call themselves women. Uh, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about teaching this nonsense in schools. We're talking about uh, mutilating kids' bodies with hormones. That's what we're talking about. So I'm really, really happy to totally gatekeep the word woman and women's spaces and under no circumstances whatsoever allow any born males in. Um, we can dress it up. We can call it whatever we like. I can sit here and tell you I'm not transphobic because transphobia means accepting that there are something uh, called trans and then saying that I hate them. Uh, I don't hate anybody. I feel quite sorry for uh, particularly um, people like the person who was standing in the statue, I think a lot of them are really vulnerable kids that have been fed a lie. Um, and they're going to wake up when they're about 30 and look back and just ask themselves what on earth they've done with their okay. lives. Okay. Kelly, Jay, I've got to leave it there, but thank you for joining me. Thank you. And just to reiterate, apologies to anyone who was uh, offended by the uh, pretty appalling language you heard from our first guest in that debate. It's a shame. I wanted to have a rational, sensible debate. Uh, they didn't. So that's it. Um, they won't be back, and we move on.